Tyrion is actually a villain. You don't believe me? Well, keep watching. Tyrion is likable in the beginning. He's the mistreated son of the mighty Tywin Lannister, Lord of Casterly Rock and Warden of the West. Tyrion is blamed for unspeakable acts that he didn't commit. He's guilty of your worst assumptions about him because he's a dwarf. Tyrion has not had an easy life, but he has had a much easier life than the small folk that he rules over in A Clash of Kings. They call him the Imp of Lannister to his face and whisper Twisted Demon Monkey behind his back. Tyrion's journey in the books gets very dark and disturbing. He goes from cunning, mistreated underdog that we all root for to monster. The real Tyrion didn't show up in the Game of Thrones TV show. Not truly. Tyrion's character on the TV show had no growth, no change. He was the same in season one all the way through season eight. That's not the Tyrion that we know. That's not the Tyrion that will show up in Winds of Winter. In the first book, Tyrion's smarts and funny are showcased. He's smart and he can talk himself out of almost any sticky situation he finds himself in. One of the most admirable things about Tyrion is his bravery. He's not a craven by any means. Maester Aemon calls Tyrion a giant that has visited them at the ends of the earth. Varys tells Tyrion about a small man casting a large shadow. Makoro tells Tyrion that he sees Tyrion in his fires, a small man that casts a big shadow. Tyrion has a big part to play in the wars to come, and his influence will loom large. But the Tyrion you think you know might not be the Tyrion that you get. The first few chapters that Tyrion appears in, we learn of his passion to stay up all night reading until the dawn. Relatable. He also wants to go to the wall and see the edge of the world and piss off the wall. Relatable. He's a relatable character. He travels with Jon to the wall and he's brutally honest with Jon about what he's getting himself into. It's honesty, but it's also mockery. He mocks everyone at the wall. He mocks everyone in real life. It's likely like a defense defense mechanism for him. Mock them all as they mock me. Mock them all better than they mock me. When Tyrion leaves the wall, Tyrion is taken by Lady Stark for crimes he didn't commit. He suffers captivity in a sky cell and a trial at the Vale. But Tyrion emerges somewhat victorious. He's not guilty and he has new friends, Bronn and mountainous wildlings. Tyrion really begins his ascendance into darkness when he becomes handed the king. Lord Tywin has just bestowed this huge power on him and Tyrion starts to walk the path of the demon monkey. He's not the monster yet though. He doesn't embrace it, he fights it, even though circumstances and situations will make him a monster. The Seven Kingdoms are torn apart. There's the King in the South, the Bastard of Lannister, Joffrey Baratheon. It's not Joffrey that holds power, it's Tyrion. We have become swollen, bloated, foul. Brother couples with sister in the bed of kings, and the fruit of their incest capers in his palace to the piping of a twisted little monkey demon. Highborn ladies fornicate with fools and give birth to monsters. Even the High Septon has forgotten the gods. He bathes in scented waters and grows fat on lark and lamprey while his people starve. Pride comes before prayer. Maggots rule our castles and gold is all. But no more. The rotten summer is at an end and the whoremonger king is brought low. When the boar did open him, a great stench rose to heaven, and a thousand snakes slid forth from his belly, hissing and biting. He jabbed his bony finger back at Comet and Castle. There comes the harbinger! Cleanse yourselves, the gods cry out, lest ye be cleansed. Bathe in the wine of righteousness, or you shall be bathed in fire. Fire! Tyrion was not politically stupid like Ned Stark. Tyrion came to King's Landing with a plan, and he set the deck for himself to be successful. He took control of the city watch. He had his own guards, the Moon Brothers, Burned Men, Black Ears. He sniffed out informers. He took power and took it for true. And he loved it. 
He loved every minute. He loved being in the center of the great game. Tyrion proves himself to be a capable hand. He's politically savvy. He also does good things. He tries to bring Joffrey to his senses multiple times. He protects Sansa. He mocks Cersei. He does things that appeal to people, but he does other things that aren't savory. Tyrion knows exactly what Joffrey is, but Tyrion still preserves Joffrey's rule. Tyrion knows better than anyone else what his father is, but he aids Tywin anytime he can. The Battle of the Blackwater, protecting bad people, preserving bad people. He's considered the good man in the bad family. Stannis, the rightful king, is coming to take King's Landing. Tyrion has a plan, building winch towers and his chain and wildfire. Cersei is also a big part of the preparations of King's Landing and that's also overlooked a lot. But anyway, Tyrion uses wildfire, a weapon of mass destruction, and ends up leading the charge on Baratheon forces in place of the Hound. These acts of cunning and courage make you like him. The imp stands tall and fights for the city while his nephew the king tucks tail and runs to hide in the Red Keep. Joffrey is an evil piece of shit. Why preserve his rule? Tyrion thought about it. He thought about how much easier it would be to rule through Tommen, how much better Tommen is than Joffrey. But ultimately, Tyrion would never kill his own blood. Tyrion wasn't a kinslayer, and yet yeah, it would have been easier to rule through Tommen. But Tyrion also had some pretty dark thoughts about Tommen. Cersei takes one of Tyrion's whores that's not really his whore, a la Yaya, and Cersei says that she will release her when Tyrion releases Tommen. But Tyrion has threats. Keep her then, but keep her safe. If these animals think they can use her, well, sweet sister, let me point out that the scale tips two ways. He reached for his father's voice and found it. Whatever happens to her happens to Tommen as well. And that includes the beatings and the rapes. If she thinks me such a monster, I'll play the part for her. Cersei believes that Tyrion would make good on these threats. She believes he would kill Joffrey and he would kill Tommen. But Tyrion is not this monster that they think he is. Not yet. He's progressively becoming darker and darker and darker. Tyrion Lannister has definitely suffered abuse and bullying, but he's also given his fair share. I invoke the Cersei line, oh, your papa was mean to you. Tyrion was put on trial for killing Joffrey because Cersei had reason to believe that Tyrion killed Joffrey. Out of every person at the wedding, Tyrion had been the only one to threaten the life of his own blood. These are the kind of events in your life that can change you. Or if you are already on a road towards darkness, they mash the gas in and send you hurling full speed. The events of Storm of Swords are that for Tyrion. Being stripped of the position he loved, being married to Sansa, and Sansa absolutely being disgusted by him. Joffrey's constant torment, everything leading up to Tyrion. Tyrion's trial in King's Landing for the murder of King Joffrey and the trial itself send him off into the abyss. He's hanging by threads, guys. Tyrion's relationship with Shay is basically the harbinger of the Tyrion to come. Tyrion is in love with Shay, or the idea of Shay, or the idea of Shay loving him. Which brings me to Tyrion's first wife, Tysha. Tysha is a peasant that Tyrion had a chance encounter with on the road. He falls in love with her and they get married and when Tywin finds out, he teaches Tyrion a lesson by gang raping Tysha in front of Tyrion and making Tyrion go last and pay and all of this shit. Jamie tells Tyrion that Tysha was just a whore that Jamie paid to finagle with Tyrion. And Tyrion has believed this all of his life. When Jamie releases Tyrion from his cell to escape, Jamie tells Tyrion the truth. Tysha wasn't a whore. And Jamie lied because Tywin told him to. This is a significant nosedive moment for Tyrion. Jamie asked Tyrion if he killed Joffrey. Jamie handed him a ring of keys. I gave you the truth. You owe me the same. Did you do it? Did you kill him? The question was another knife twisting in his guts. Tyrion lies and said that he did kill Joffrey. They think he's a monster anyway. Why not be one? Why not tell them what they want to hear? His life was a lie. All of it was a lie. More importantly, the Tysha situation highlights his relationship with Shay. Tyrion wanted Shay to be Tysha. 
to really love him for him, to be held, to be loved, to be cared for. But Shay was a whore. And Shay's relationship with Tyrion wasn't one of love. It was one of, what can you do for me? They are both looking for things from each other. Tyrion is looking for love and warmth. And Shay is interested in money and the lavish lifestyle. If Tyrion wasn't so fooled by his own sweet notions in his head, he could have seen the truth because Shay didn't try to hide it. And he sniffed around it many times, but he didn't want to face the truth. He wanted to be blind to it. Tyrion had never seen the dead girl's face, but in his mind, she was Shay and Tysha both. Can a whore truly love anyone? I wonder. No, don't answer. Some things I would rather not know. I could go on forever and ever about how Sansa, Shay, and Tysha have very significant meanings each in Tyrion's life and how they all highlight certain aspects of his character, but that would need to be like an entire video on its own. Women have always been a problem for Tyrion Lannister. He has mommy issues. It's never been more prevalent than when he's married to Sansa, betting Shay, and thinking of Tysha. Everyone gives Shay a lot of shit for testifying against Tyrion, but she didn't have a choice. It's basically testify or die, lie or die. How many people had sold Tyrion upriver? How many people have done things wrong to Tyrion? How many people abandoned him? A lot. The answer is a lot. But he only killed Shay. Shay had no choice but to do what she had to do to survive, and he killed her. Killing Shay made him the monster they all thought he was anyway. Jamie confessing about Tysha hurt Tyrion beyond measure. But the fuse that I think ignited the flame in Tyrion was Jaime asking Tyrion if he killed Joffrey. Sir Jaime, the only person who had ever been kind to Tyrion, his brother, his white knight, the man he knew would ride to the edges of the earth to fight for him. Jaime, the Lannister that knew him best, thinking that it would be possible that he would kill Joffrey, his own blood sent Tyrion into depths so dark he chose to become the monster and he's embraced it. George talks about the only thing worth writing about is the heart in conflict with itself. Tyrion wants to be accepted by his family as a Lannister. He does everything he can to fight for a position in his family whether it be fighting in Tywin's vanguard, going to King's Landing to hold Joffrey's grasp on the throne even though he hates Joffrey's fucking guts, wedding Sansa, whatever. He tries and tries to fit in and to be a Lannister, but no matter what he does, he's cursed. Because even after he saved a city, saved the throne, helped win a war, he still wasn't accepted. And the one man that he thought really knew him, really loved him, thought he was capable of killing his own blood. Jamie thinks of Tyrion in the same light as the small folk that call him Twisted Demon Monkey. So why not kill Tywin? They believe he's capable of it anyway. Tyrion's conflict is his love and hate relationship with his own family. He hates Tywin and admires him at the same time. He is Tywin. He wants to be Tywin. He spends his whole handship trying to emulate Tywin. He wants to be a part of his family, to be loved, to be needed, but he isn't. And in Essos, he has dreams of becoming the greatest Lannister killer of all time. When Tyrion goes to Essos, he's at an all-time low. He's a man with nothing to lose. There's a price on his head. He's murdered his father. He's escaped a death sentence. Varys stays behind in King's Landing, hiding in the shadows, and Tyrion is smuggled across the Narrow Sea and ends up with Illyrio. Tyrion is drunk on this entire journey drunker than the regular Tyrion. And while Tyrion's Tysha, where do horrors go storyline is there and present in his mind, I feel like he's just using it for justification and validation for the feelings that he has towards his family right now and the things he plans to do to them. He wants to kill Jaime and Cersei and a Lannister always pays their debts. In Essos, Tyrion is almost suicidal. He is homicidal with no reason to live other than vengeance. Vengeance for every rotten thing he he suffered in his life and you can't be mad at him or think he's evil or dark for wanting to serve those who have wronged him with the same dishes he was served but while in Essos Tyrion becomes cruel and hateful towards people that have done him no wrong he has mistreated a slave girl at Illyrio's manse it might please my lord to strangle you that's how I serve my last whore 
Do you think your master would object? Surely not. He has a hundred more like you, but no one else like me. This time, when he grinned, he got the fear he wanted. He's frightening this girl, degrading her and threatening her for no reason other than to get an arousal of fear out of her. There's also another slave girl, just as bad. The girl doesn't want to sleep with a drunken dwarf with a missing nose like no one wants to bang an ugly dwarf and Tyrion doesn't care. He rapes her. Have you ever bedded a monster before? Now's as good as time as any. Out of your clothes and onto your back, if it please you or not. This girl has marks on her back where she's been whipped. He views her as a corpse with dead eyes. And he doesn't take her once, he takes her twice. And neither time does she want it. But Tyrion doesn't care. Also, while on the Shy Maid, Tyrion gives Aegon or Fagon really, really, really bad advice. Like season seven Tyrion giving Daenerys bad advice, but like 10 times worse. The advisors that Aegon has wants him to seek out Daenerys and Aegon and Danny invade Westeros together. But Tyrion says he wouldn't do it that way. He has another plan and he would do it this way. And that's for Aegon to invade Westeros by himself without dragons. And Instead of Aegon going to Daenerys, a beggar king with his begging bowl in hand. And he purposely plants seeds of doubt in Aegon's young mind about his advisors and his plans, which ultimately leads to Aegon invading Westeros on his own. And it could lead to getting him killed. And Tyrion had no reason to do this. He just did it because it was fun and he wanted to manipulate this boy. The Penny situation is a bit more complex. Tyrion does care for Penny. Penny is, in my opinion, like she symbolizes his humanity. He has compassion for Penny, but he is also shallow. This love that he wants, that Penny might want to give him, he doesn't accept. He's not physically attracted to Penny, not one bit, because he's shallow as hell. Um, had she been pretty to look upon, had she not been a dwarf, things probably would be different between those two. But Tyrion does want to protect Penny and he does care for her. Penny has dreams and says prayers and has hope. She's like season one Sansa. And Tyrion has none of this. Tyrion is cynical about the whole world. His whole worldview is skewed. But Tyrion doesn't ruin the dreams for Penny. He pays her in false coin. Just like Shay paid Tyrion in false coin and sweet lies. He pities Penny. Her touch makes him uncomfortable, just the way he made Sansa uncomfortable. Penny has a pig and a dog, and she loves them, clings to them like they're the last thing she has left in the world. And Tyrion tricks her into escaping and abandoning her pig and dog. Trickery. Something she would never do on her own. His sweet lies and false coin finally wear off, and he can no longer suffer her fantasies. He slaps her and tells her Crunch is dead and the pig probably too. Get over it. It devastates Penny. Improves even further how dark Tyrion has gotten. He's consumed with vengeance and hate. He threatens to rape Cersei, but it could easily be dismissed as saying shit just to be shocking. He's done a ton of shit in Essos just because. Just because he hates himself. He hates his life. And his only reason for living is vengeance. In Winds of Winter, Tyrion is going to link up with Daenerys or Aegon. Or Daenerys and Aegon. And they are coming home with fire and blood. Nothing would make this Tyrion more happy than to see Cersei and Jaime's face. As he stands beside the Targaryen king or queen or both with their dragons. But will Tyrion stay evil, dark, and the twisted demon monkey? I think he will. Tyrion did everything to be a Lannister. He did everything to make the lords love him, the small folk love him, and they didn't. He's abandoned the thought of being loved. The moment Jaime asked him if he killed Joffrey, Tyrion took leave of all his senses, and he doesn't want them to love him anymore. He wants them to fear him. The last time someone came to King's Landing, the demon monkey saved the city. Will he save it again? Why would he care if it burned? Why would he care if the whole damn Westeros burned? Fuck it all. I'm a monster. That's Tyrion right now. Things could change. He might have a revelation or a miracle that changes his dark path. I think Tyrion's arc could circle right back to a clash of kings, the battle of the Blackwater. But instead of being the good Tyrion, he will be the demon monkey. Don't you see the jest, Lord Varys? 
Tyrion waved a hand at the shuttered windows, at all the sleeping city. Storm's end has fallen, and Stannis is coming with fire and steel, and the gods alone know what dark powers, and the good folk don't have Jaime to protect them, nor Robert, nor Renly, nor Rhaegar, nor their precious knight of the flowers. Only me, the one they hate, he laughed again. The dwarf, the evil counselor, the twisted little monkey demon. I'm all that stands between them and chaos. Oh, that just gave me the chills. <laughs> but what do you think about Tyrion's dark turn in the books? And why do you think the show did not show this? And, and even after all this, you may not think that he's a villain. And that's okay. But George himself has said Tyrion was a villain. But what do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my Sweet Summer children, have a good day.